What's up with you? What's up with you, man? It's the Bronco out the Frog coming at you with another reaction video. I done came across this video. That hoe was called Why Players Avoid Real Madrid. I say, what? Players avoid Real Madrid not on the thumbnail we had killing. Now we all know when Bape do a Real Madrid because Potty signs him out, threw him that goddamn bag. Threw him that bag. So I say that makes sense. But other than that, I thought everybody in their mama wanted to go to Real Madrid. Ain't hey, Jamal Musiala, ain't he linked to Real Madrid? Goddamn Jew Bellingham. They just signed that Enrique, Enrique bloke from Brazil. Real Madrid, the place to be, man. It must be something I don't know about. So, hey, let's see where it goes then. Every 10 seconds, somebody buys a Real Madrid shirt. That's Facts. over 3 million shirts per season. Facts! 3 million... Facts! This has to... Real Madrid has to have the most fans out of any club in goddamn history. I'm talking about... All I see is Hala Madrid, Hala Madrid on Twitter, Instagram comments, YouTube comments, and football games, FC Dallas games. I be seeing a couple of blokes of Real Madrid kits on. It's like, damn, bro. That reaches worldwide. No football club has made more money over the last five years. 3.5 billion. Like that. The Cowboys of football. One accounting man. report even questioned whether the club could survive at all. Real Madrid has gone from near bankruptcy to becoming the most valuable sports team on the planet. How did they manage to rise to the top of a highly competitive and dynamic sports industry? We are breaking down the strategy that made Real Madrid successful. And how players like Ronaldo, Haaland, and Mbappé are challenging it today. And Erling Haaland. Haaland was linked to Real Madrid too before he went to Man City. But I can't also, I can't discount the fact that Premier League is taking all the players now. This could be what that's about. They avoiding Real Madrid to go to the goddamn Premier League, man. It's just what it is. That's what it's leading to. Goddamn Super League is go end up coming true, it look like. Because Real Madrid manager was pushing for the Super League. It I all think. began with this transfer. <laughs> Yo soy presidente del Real Madrid, Luis Figo. I seen the documentary, bro. Del Real I seen the Figo documentary. In the century, Florentino Perez ran for president of Real Madrid. As part of his campaign, he promised to sign Luis, Luis Figo, Figo from Barcelona for a then world record fee of over 60 million euros. Figo straight said, I'm sorry for pausing you, bro. But Figo was like, nah, I don't want to sign with y'all no more. That boy Perez say, bro, you finna sign with us. We gonna give you this amount of money. Oh, you still don't want to sign? We gonna give you this round of money. If you don't sign it, we already got this pre-contract that we gonna got you on. You finna go into lawsuit. Perez like that man. Figo up, bro. The transfer saga was so crazy that Netflix made a whole documentary about mm. it. Yep. But I what see. we are going to focus on is not the drama or the price tag, but a rather simple change in the wording of a clause buried deep in Figo's contract. One that arguably changed the course of yep. Real Madrid and football in. in general. The image rights. Image rights can image be defined rights. as a person's likeness. That is, their image, name, nickname, voice, signature, and any other characteristic that is unique to them. Generally, a player owns 100% of these image rights. Whenever a company, including the club they play for, wishes to use their image in an advert, they must pay for it. At Swear! Ah, that's messed up. That's how y'all football boys get... Is it... Are those in NBA and NFL contracts too? Because that's well wow right there. At least, that was how it worked until Perez came into play. Starting with Figo, all of the Galacticos that signed with Madrid handed over 50% of their image rights to the club. This meant that whenever any money was made using the image of Zidane, Ronaldo or Raul, whether that was through a Real Madrid sponsor or a private deal, Madrid would pocket 50%. For example, Adidas paying Zidane to wear their shoes. Half of it went to Madrid. Go with today, so Handing man, over bro. half of your private sponsorship earnings to your club was unheard of at the time. And yet, Perez convinced every single Galactico to make the sacrifice. So how did this help turn Real Madrid into the biggest club on the planet? The true magic behind Perez's plan becomes a lot clearer when you take a look at one specific Galactico. Aside from his obvious talents, David Beckham's arrival at Madrid brought something that Perez deeply desired. What was it? An English fan? Sorry, wrong clip. Perez was in love with Brand Beckham. 
At the time of his transfer, Beckham was one of the biggest celebrities in Asia. Yeah. Restaurants in Bangkok served Beckham meatballs, and at one temple you could even pay homage to a statue of Beckham. So basically, Perez wanted like an international celebrity superstar, not just a football player. He want more. He want a goddamn poster child because all the money that this man David Beckham is earning. Half of it is going to goddamn Halamari. It wasn't just Asia. Crazy. At the time, it was said that there was not a single person in the world who didn't know Beckham. In nice other cow. words, Beckham was the most marketable footballer on the planet. Now imagine receiving 50% of everything Beckham made from sponsorship. Actually, we don't have to imagine. Just look at how Real Madrid's finances changed over time. By Beckham's second season, they had doubled their overall <laughs> revenue. Almost half coming from commercial deals. That is crazy. Beckham became so integral to Madrid's commercial appeal that Perez was quoted as saying he would sell the Santiago Bernabeu before he sold Beckham. Now that's crazy. Now, now it kind of puts in perspective now that I see that because I never knew that he was like one of the most known footballers like ever. He was the most known. This man went to the MLS. That man went to the MLS. That's crazy. I bet you that hoe was a big ass sign. What was true Ooh. for Beckham was true for every single one of the Galacticos. They each brought new audiences and commercial opportunities. Now you might wonder why any player with so much commercial appeal would give away half of their sponsorship money to their club. This know. is the true genius of Florentino Perez. They Perez's want to win, player. I guess. When Perez became president, he realized that football was turning into a media product, and the clubs needed to become the production companies. He knew that if he created a team of superstars, he could very easily package yeah, and sell that product to sponsors for a lot of money. Much like how a movie full of big names is very easy to sell to Netflix, even if the movie is a pile of rotten tomatoes. The relationship between the Galacticos and Madrid started to look like the relationship between Tom Cruise and Hollywood. The clubs, <laughs> much like a big studio, had all you. of the infrastructure to put the talent on the big stage. And players like Beckham brought in the fans. In essence, it was a quid pro quo. The club benefits from having access to a worldwide fan base, and the player benefits by being in the most attractive team on the planet. Okay, this Beckham is already was the highest paid footballer at Manchester United at 15 million euros. But after one year in Madrid, he made 22 million. <whistles> Players like Beckham and Zidane knew that his starring role in the mythical Galacticos gave them greater commercial opportunities okay, and yeah. happily handed over 50% of their earnings. Sound like the Cowboys, This man. was Perez's plan all along. Make the most marketable team on the planet and take a handsome cut of the profits. The fact that both Madrid and Becker made huge amounts of money from this 50-50 split is a testament to the effectiveness of the strategy yeah. and created the image of Madrid as the Hollywood of football, the place you go to reach the next level of fame and riches. But now in the new era, um, let me guess on why it don't work. With the advert of social media, they don't need a club to hoist them up on this little brand ass stage to get deals when they can use social media to do it. Goddamn TikTok and blow boys up and whatnot. On top of them not wanting them to give 50% of their damn revenue earnings to the damn club. But all good things must come to an end. Just look at the recent transfer windows. Yeah. Both Kylian Mbappé and Erling Haaland, the two biggest prospects in football, decided against moving to Madrid. Yeah, went to Paris. And again, the deciding factor could be image rights. But this time, not in favor of Madrid. There is probably no player who cares more about his image rights than Kylian Mbappé. For months, he has been in a dispute with the French Federation. Mbappé has repeatedly refused yeah, to take part in photo shoots with the Federation, arguing that being pictured with the sponsors in question would damage his personal brand. Damn. His awareness of the value of his image rights also played an important role in the negotiations with Real Madrid. Yeah, about his money. It is understood that Mbappé rejected Madrid because they were insisting on taking a 40% cut of his personal image rights. What I tell you, these young blokes, these new young blokes is about their money. They're not finna get effed over like them boys did back in the day. It's a new era, it's a new generation. I'm telling y'all, I knew it. And 40% is already a big step towards oh, the player for Madrid standard. The only time they moved away from their 50-50 arrangement before was to sign Cristiano Ronaldo. 
Ooh. Initially, Ronaldo received a 60-40 split, but as he grew into the world's most famous yeah. player, he reportedly negotiated an even better deal. Yeah, Ronaldo yeah. left in 2018. How much? It had to be like 70-30, because somebody like Ronaldo, you don't even need... He he don't even need Real Madrid to boost his stature up there. That man was on Man United before he went there. But the damage was done. Madrid allowed a player to break the 50-50 partnership and position themselves as having a more powerful brand than the club. In some ways, this signaled the death of the Galactico project. Today, players are more confident in growing their own brands outside of their clubs yes. and are demanding greater control over their image. Ronaldo, Madrid man. no longer holds the image as the Hollywood club where you go to catch your big break. Chelsea is spending money. They are spending money. I see it every time on Twitter. Every time I open Twitter, these boys have dropped the bag on somebody else before this transfer deadline ends, bro. 2018, Madrid has had a similar transfer spent to Arsenal and Atletico Madrid. With players able to reach huge audiences through social media, partnering 50-50 with their club is getting less Did I say that? Did I say that? Obviously, the image rights clause was only one of many factors that led to the rise of Real. But under its light, the decisions of the new-gen superstars Mbappé and Haaland become even more relevant. Are they going to end up at Madrid eventually? Or has the simple strategy that led Real Madrid to glory met its match? Hey, everybody going to the While Real is the club of choice for the best players, when it comes to choosing a premium e-commerce partner, athletes like Beckham use Shopify to manage their business. Our video sponsor for today. We actually made hey, a whole series of videos about athletes who trust Shopify as an Shopify. But yeah, hey, that was an interesting video right there. I pretty, I did not know that them boys had to sign over half of their damn commercial earnings to Real Madrid if you played for Real Madrid. Albeit, Real Madrid did get you more sponsors, but 50%? I wouldn't have went there either. And if they still have that in place today, I know they said Cristiano broke it, so it's not as powerful. I wouldn't be going to Real Madrid either, bro. And that could have been the breaking point of Killian going there i don't know if any other clubs have this little model right here to where half the sponsor money go to the club but it's crazy right there how am i did it it's crazy goddamn perez i don't like perez not after that figo documentary he did figo so dirty i don't rock with perez and i already know i don't rock with Real madrid <laughs> i'm out